Let's return to our top story. China has donated emergency power equipment worth 167 million rand to South Africa. It will primarily be used to help our hospitals, clinics, courthouses and other state facilities keep the lights on during load shedding. Half a billion rand has also been made available as a grant to South Africa to deal with the energy crisis. At the same time, Electricity Minister Jose Ansorama Kopa has signed cooperation deals with eight Chinese companies. The minister, of course, making the point today that many of these companies already are helping South Africa. So is China a perfect partner to help fix the energy crisis, as the minister says? Let's speak to Professor Samson Mampueli, Energy Secretariat at Saneri. That's the SA National Energy Development Institute. Professor, thank you so much for joining us. Um, so the minister is saying that China has walked this road as well. They too have had an energy crisis. They've had to gear up alternative energy quickly. They are experts in coal. Do you agree that they have expertise and knowledge to know how to really help us best? Good evening to you and the viewers. Um, yes, I fully agree. Uh, China has gone through almost a similar situation <laughs> that we get going through as South Africa. And um, the, the, the one thing I like about, uh, about this relationship is that if you look at the, 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 the way China solved their problem, um, part of the, their solution was the unbundling of their, <clears throat> of their utility company. Uh, they broke it down into five different utility companies at regional level uh, with one holding company, which is a state-owned company. So all five are state-owned. And in the past few days, uh, we've been having these discussions in South Africa where people were talking about uh, the selling of ESCOM when it comes to, to the, 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 the unbundling of ESCOM that government is busy uh, doing. That, that is not the case. The, the, the government is trying to follow examples of how some of the largest utility companies in the world operate. China currently is the largest uh, 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 renewable energy uh, uh, producer in the world. They, they produce even the solar panels, they, they are the largest producers of solar panels in the world. They are, they are, they are their power se sector itself, their power system uh, consists of largely more than 50% renewable energy. And, and the, the thermal power is, is about 4% or so. They have some nuclear assets as well. So they are, they are quite large and they are a very perfect partner for us to, to basically partner and learn lessons from them while working with them to try and resolve the, the, the load shedding crisis. So far, they are the only ones in the world who came with uh, what we can call immediate kind of interventions, uh, even though they are, they are tiny, but they are quite significant. Hmm. We know that there's a 167 million rand donation in form of um, equipment that can actually be used at police stations, for example, to keep the lights on. Some of that's already on the water, on its way to us. It's interesting, though, this 500 million rand grant. So that would be a loan. Um, and it seems from what the electricity minister said earlier, that is likely to be used to expand our grid. Uh, do you think that would be the best use of the money? So, so the loan is about 1.5 billion uh, US dollars um, that will be used to expand our grid. And uh, to put that into context, our grid, South Africa needs about 200 billion rands uh, to fix the, the grid, to, to strengthen it, to ensure, to ensure that it's, it's, a, it's able to take in the new generation capacity that we're planning. There's, there's about 10 gigawatts uh, that the private sector is planning uh, we, we, when that comes on board, we'll have further grid constraints. There's, there's uh, renewable energy projects that are supposed to connect to the grid. They are unable to connect to the grid because of grid constraints. Um, the, the grid was, was built quite some, some time ago, and, and the, the, the expansion program for, for the grid kind of lagged behind uh, when, it, when it came to the, 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 the generation capacity because we went through uh, that program of um, a, a rural electrification, for instance, uh, uh, extending the grid to, to, to people who, previous, who were previously disadvantaged, who didn't have access to electricity, and, and then 
because of some of those issues, we end up where we are now. So the 1.5 billion rands is, is money that is going to be to be used to assist us in terms of strengthening and expanding the grid. And uh, it, it, it's money that government was struggling to find, really. So, so that's that's a welcome uh, kind of a, 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 a an input. The question is whether it's coming in the form of green finance, uh, just like what we were getting elsewhere, because then it talks to the to the interest that South Africa will be paying. Green finance comes at a very very low interest rates, uh, whereas. The, the, the funding that you get out in the market comes at very high interest rates, which is why ESCOM struggled with the 400 and something billion uh, debt that um, a government had to take over. There is a 500 million rand uh, donation, um, <clears throat> the terms of which are not yet released. The minister only talked about the fact that uh, one of the terms is that we must take ownership of this money when it comes to South Africa, which is an obvious term. Uh, we, we don't know the, the rest of the terms associated with that particular uh, uh, funding that has been made available by China. But all these in the main are welcome. It is the nitty gritties and the details that we, we really need to, to learn about. And I'm sure the minister will be releasing those details in the coming few weeks as well. Mm. I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about the role of the private sector, because as you say, unbundling is often seen in South Africa as, oh, we're privatizing, but it's something even China has had to do. Are there lessons in that balance between the private sector and government's involvement in something like uh, a national energy um, plan? So, so the private sector plays a huge role, um, you know, at, at in, in the in the power sector at international level um we know for instance if we are to go outside of the the BRICS uh, block uh, in america most, most of the electricity is, sub, is supplied by the private sector now coming back to to the unbundling uh, and 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 the involvement of this of the private sector in the south african landscape um, we, we, we know that we've got uh, a lot of problems in terms of the generation capacity. Um, the reason why we have load shedding basically is because we produce less electricity than what the, 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 the economy demands. So in that particular case, when we break up um, ESCOM into the three divisions or three business units, but still under, under the same um, umbrella, so to speak, to use the layman's term, uh, that then allows ESCOM transmission to buy electricity and to go around and look for, for, for generation capacity all over the show and ensure that we, they, we they, they ensure that we have adequacy in terms of adequate supply of electricity. Whether that comes from ESCOM, whether that comes from the private sector, whether that comes from the power pool, or from additional uh, um, uh, uh, generation reserves that we can get elsewhere, that becomes a story for another day, but they need to, to, to come up with a, 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 a market that will ensure security of supply of the electricity. And that market will also ensure that there is a competition. So when once the private sector as well is, in, is involved, they have to compete. We have seen the, the, the benefits of competition through the REAP program that uh, we've been implementing in South Africa since 2013, uh, where the price of, uh, of, of, of electricity from the REAP program has been going down. We started at above three rand something an average uh, per, per kilowatt hour. Now we're sitting at around 49 cents per kilowatt hour because of the investment that South Africa has made and the involvement of the private the private sector and the competition as well. So all these efforts are quite good efforts um, that, that will ensure that we have security of energy supply at a cheaper uh, cost going forward. Um, a little earlier this week, I spoke to the Energy Council of South Africa and they were really quite upbeat. They, they say that this is going to be the worst year for load shedding, but they say enough is being put in place quickly enough to see a marked improvement um, in power outages by the end of the year. Do you share that optimism? Yeah, um, they, they, they're quite right. Um, the pace um, only uh, started uh, moving uh, high when the, the president uh, appointed uh, Minister Ramahopa 
to run with some of these things. Um, and, and Minister Maram Hupa has done quite a lot of work, working together with Minister Kodan and, and, and Minister uh, uh, Mantashe. Um, in the past, there was, there was quite slow uh, a, a progression in terms of the implementation, for instance, of the energy action plan. And that was because there was no single point of entry or single minister that was responsible for implementation of that particular plan. Since he came on board and, and, and the president gave him some powers and clarity on what he needed to do, um, things have started moving to the right direction, not at the pace that all of us would have wanted, uh, but it's in the right direction. Uh, for instance, if you look at the, the from the time that the Minister of Electricity came on board, the energy availability factor for the for the coal fleet, which is the biggest problem uh, in, in in this whole crisis, was sitting as at about forty percent. He worked very well closely with ESCOM and and Minister Godan, and they managed to bring the energy availability factor to above sixty percent uh, by now. And the, the target is that once we reach 70% energy availability factor, then ex, uh, the low shedding will be the, the thing of the past. But over and above that, there are various other interventions. The, the opportunities that come with the uh, uh, agreements, such as the ones that have been signed now, signed now with China, bringing, bringing in solar panels, for instance, at a much cheaper cost from China, and uh, local manufacturing, uh, as well as technology localization on various other technologies, working with the with the local national system of innovation. I'll give this example. For instance, South Africa has in, invested more than one billion rand in in research on hydrogen, and some of the of the the work that the Chinese are, are doing has got to do with the green hydrogen production uh, along with the with the Japanese and others. And if we are to be serious about technology localization. We, when we work with the Chinese, when they come here, we must then be able to open up our IP and then work with them so that our IP can also form part of the, the, the projects that they will be bringing on board because there will be projects over and above the, 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 the agreements that Minister Ram Kupa, uh, and other ministers uh, have signed uh, uh, during this BRIC summit. All right, that all sounds very positive, very hopeful, and let's hope uh, that we continue in the right direction. Thank you so much, Professor Samson Mampueli. He's the Energy Secretariat at SANERI. That's the SA National Energy Development.